Hello young mathematicians and welcome back to my lectures about Euler's contributions to mathematics. In this part 2 about the Basel problem we will investigate how Euler accelerated the convergence of our famous series that gives us pi squared divided by 6. In general it is hard to believe doing better than Jacob Bernoulli in summing such infinite series, but we will see that Bernoulli's methods are naive in comparison to Euler's ingenuous techniques. More precisely, let me remind you that we would like to find the sum of 1 plus 1 divided by 4 plus 1 divided by 9 plus 1 divided by 16 and so on and so forth. And let me remind you that we do not know for now that it is equal to pi squared divided by 6, okay? In general, if you would like to sum a series and that we do not know its final sum, a first reasonable step is to find an approximation of the infinite series by adding the first few terms of it. For instance, if we compute 1 plus 1 fourth, we will get exactly 1.25. If we go further, we get 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 divided by 9 is almost equal to 1.36. 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth and plus 1 divided by 16 is almost 1.25. 42. So where does this go if we compute more terms like 1000 terms or 1 million terms? As you can imagine it is hard to do this by hand so I wrote a little computer program which will return the sum of the n first term of our series. I call this function Basel which depends on the argument n and which will sum 1 divided by k squared for k in range of 1 to n plus 1 which meaning that k will go from 1 until n. If I run this with n equals to 1 we get of course 1. Now if I run this with n equals to 2 we should get 1.25. Is that so? Yes, it is. So if you go further and compute Basel of 3, one gets almost 1.36. And now if I go to Basel of 100 terms, then we get 1.6349803 something. And if you go to Basel of 1000 terms, which is quite big actually if you did this by hand, we get 1.643934 and so on and so forth. And now actually we know theoretically that the value that we're looking for is pi squared divided by 6. So if I compute pi squared divided by 6 here, do I actually get something close to 1.6439? Actually as you can see here, if we compute 1000 terms of the series of the general term 1 divided by k squared, we get 1.6439, but actually the theoretical values, meaning the exact value, is almost equal to 1.6449, meaning that actually the third decimal here, even with computing 1000 terms, is still not the same as the theoretical value. What is remarkable here is that our series goes to pi squared divided by 6 very, very slowly. And let me remind you that Euler back in his days did not have computers to compute Basel until 1000 terms or to 1 million terms. And that Euler did not know that the series goes to pi squared divided by 6 and that he had to compute its decimals until he gets to something probably known to him. Euler was aware that this series converges very slowly and this is why actually he invented something to make it converge quickly and to get more decimals with few computations. Let us see together how this works. Before using heavy tools, I would like to tell you that mathematicians before Euler knew that actually this series must converge to a value lesser than 2. To see why, we notice that our series can be rewritten as 1 plus 1 divided by 2 times 2 plus 1 divided by 3 times 3 plus 1 divided by 4 times 4 and so on and so forth. And this is actually lesser than 1 plus 1 divided than 1 times 2 plus 1 divided by 2 times 3 plus 1 divided by 3 times 4 etc. And this sum here telescopes and goes, let me remind you, to 1. So this, the, all, the whole series here, goes to 1 plus 1 which is 2. This means that our initial series goes to a value lesser than 2. 
More formally, one could write that actually n plus 1 squared is greater all the time than n times n plus 1. This is actually obvious. And if you take the inverses, one gets that 1 divided by n plus 1 squared is lesser or equal to 1 divided than n n plus 1. And this is actually a telescope in sum, which gives us the result here. Let us now move on to what Euler did in order to compute quickly more terms of the decimals of our infinite series. There are some prerequisites in order to understand the work of Euler. First of all, notice that the curve of 1 divided by 1 minus x is almost equal when x actually is near 0 here. It's almost the same thing as this one here and we could add terms x to the 6th plus x to the 7th and so on and so forth. And this is actually equal so to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed etc. Meaning that in order to compute the values of 1 divided by 1 minus x, one could also evaluate this sum here. To see how this works, for instance, if you take x equals to 1 half, one gets from here that 1 divided by 1 minus 1 half is the same thing as, when we compute to infinity of course, as 1 plus 1 half of course plus 1 half squared plus 1 half cubed etc. From here we get that this is equal to 1 divided by 1 half which is 2 and this gives us that 2 is equal to 1 plus 1 half plus 1 half squared plus 1 half cubed until we get to infinity which is the same thing as 1 is equal to 1 half plus 1 half all squared plus 1 half all cubed etc. And this is actually the same thing as the sum of a geometric series, right? We could actually visualize this using a square here. So this is one how the area of this square is equal to one, okay? So this one here is also equal to the area of the triangle that you see here, meaning half the square, which is one half. And this give the, gives us that one is equal to one half plus we got the other triangle in halves, we get here that this is equal to one fourth, which meaning that the total area is equal to one half, this one half still, plus one fourth. If you do the same thing again and cut this triangle into two halves, we get one eighth, and we get one divided by 16, and so on and so forth, which is the same thing, of course, as this result that you see here. One more thing to know is that near zero minus log of one minus x looks the same as x plus x squared divided by 2 plus x cubed divided by 3, which we can write as minus log of 1 minus x near 0, of course, when x tends to 0, is almost like x plus x squared divided by 2 plus x cubed divided by 3, and we could go like this to infinity. Of course, here I'm not defining everything rigorously, but that's not my aim. My aim is to show you mathematics in action. One could use this identity here to compute some decimals of log of 2. Indeed, we have that minus log of 1 minus 1 half, meaning that if we replace the x here by 1 half, we get that this is almost the same thing as 1 half plus 1 half squared divided by 2 plus 1 half cubed divided by 3 and etc. Which gives us that minus log of 1 half is almost 1 half plus 1 divided by 2 times 2 squared plus 1 divided by 3 times 2 cubed and so on and so forth. And this is here the same thing as log of 2 and this gives us that log of 2 is almost 1 half plus 1 divided by 2 times 2 squared plus 1 divided by 3 times 2 cubed plus 1 divided by 4 times 2 to the fourth etc. So in order to compute some decimals of log of 2, I will compute a few terms of this infinite series using Python. To do this, I wrote a little computer program on Python using the approximating formula for the logarithm when we are near zero. So first of all, if I check this with log of one half x is equal to one half and n is equal to one, I should get one half actually, which is true, great. Now if I try this with log of one half 
and 10 like 10 iterations one gets this value which is 6.69 almost actually log of 2 and if you would like to get the value that one gets on a calculator one should go until log of one half and 50 terms of our infinite series to get that this is equal to 0 0.6931478005 etc so check on your calculator if you are skeptical and you will find out that log of 2 is equal to this value i claim that we're almost ready to understand euler's work but before we do so one last detail is that let me remind you that minus log of 1 minus x near 0 is almost the same thing as x plus x squared divided by 2 plus x cubed divided by 3 and so on and so forth and that actually 1 divided by 1 minus x is also equal near 0 to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed etc and one could notice that if we allow ourselves to derive this relation term by term term wise then we would get that the derivative of minus log of 1 minus x would be equal near 0 to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed etc which is actually the same thing as 1 divided by 1 minus x near 0 and we know from calculus that actually this is true because derivative of minus log of 1 minus x is actually equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x nice right this is actually the main idea used by euler to accelerate the convergence of our series as we shall see in a few seconds so what is the possible link between these series that we have here and our infinite series 1 plus 1 divided by 4 plus 1 divided by 9 plus 1 divided by 16 and so on and so forth the link is if we divide this relation by x one gets that minus log of 1 minus x divided by x is equal to 1 near 0 of course plus x divided by 2 plus x squared divided by 3 plus x cubed divided by 4 etc and now actually if we integrate term by term and imagine that integrating term by term is justifiable then one gets that the integral of this function that we have here is equal to x plus x squared divided by 2 squared plus x cubed divided by 3 squared plus x to the fourth divided by 4 squared and so on and so forth what do we get here we get here actually something that looks quite the same as our infinite series of the inverses of perfect squares Euler used this idea and defined the integral, the improper integral, which is the integral between 0 and 1 half of minus log of 1 minus x divided by x dx and actually replaced minus log of 1 minus x divided by x by the integral of 0 to 1 half of 1 plus x divided by 2 plus x squared divided by 3 plus x cubed divided by 4 and so on and so forth dx here and then actually integrated term wise meaning that he wrote that this is equal to x plus x squared divided by 2 squared plus x cubed divided by 3 squared plus x to the fourth divided by 4 squared plus etc and this is actually integrated between 0 and 1 half and we get the infinite sum 1 half plus 1 half squared divided by 2 squared plus 1 half cubed divided by 2 3 squared sorry plus 1 half to the fourth divided by 4 squared and so on and so forth and one can write this in a more compact form as the sum from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the n n squared now all our next step is to compute this same integral in a different manner by using the substitution z equals to 1 minus x one guess that this is equal to the integral of 1 to 1 half of log of z all divided by 1 minus z dz 
Euler had no fear to manipulate further formal expressions and he wrote that this is equal to the integral between 1 and 1 half of log of z all multiplied by 1 plus z plus z squared plus z cubed and so on and so forth by replacing actually 1 divided by 1 minus z by 1 plus z plus z squared plus z cubed and here dz. So this is equal to the integral between 1 and 1 half of log of z dz plus the integral between 1 and 1 half of z log of z dz plus the integral between 1 and 1 half of z squared log of z dz and etc. And in order to compute these, Euler had to compute the integral of z to the n log of z dz between 1 and 1 half. And he did this by using integration by parts to get that it is equal to the expression z to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 log of z evaluated between 1 and 1 half minus the integral between 1 and 1 half of z to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 times 1 divided by z dz of course and this is actually the same thing as the expression z to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 log of z minus z to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 all squared all evaluated between 1 and 1 half. Using our last formula our integral i becomes equal to z log of z minus z plus z squared divided by 2 log of z minus z squared divided by 4 plus z cubed divided by 3 log of z minus z cubed divided by 9 plus z to the fourth divided by 4 log of z minus z to the fourth divided by 16 etc and all of this is evaluated between 1 and 1 half and this is equal to log of z all multiplied by z plus z squared divided by 2 plus z cubed divided by 3 plus z to the fourth divided by 4 etc minus z plus z squared divided by 4 plus z cubed divided by 9 plus z to the fourth divided by 16 and so on and so forth all evaluated of course between 1 and one half and we recognize here actually the series of minus log of one minus z and so the all is equal to log of z times minus log of one minus z minus this expression here which is z plus z squared divided by four plus z cubed divided by 9 and so on and so forth the whole thing evaluated of course again between 1 and 1 half i wrote down our last formula here and if you evaluate the whole expression between 1 and 1 half one guess that this is equal to minus log of 1 half all squared minus 1 half plus 1 half squared divided by 4 plus 1 half cubed divided by 9 etc all minus this same expression evaluated at 1 and 1 gets something that looks like plus log of 1 times log of 0 but what is log of 0 actually this is a limit but Euler writes it like this and he will discard it because he knows that this goes to 0 and plus this last expression here evaluated at 1 which is the same thing as you can notice as the sum from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by n squared which is our initial series incredible right now if you use the L'Hopital rule this is actually the limit when z goes to 1 minus of log of z times log of 1 minus z and L'Hopital rules will get you that this is equal to 0 actually and I'll leave it to you to check the details
I claim that we're almost done because let me remind you that from previous computations we know that the integral i is also equal to the sum from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the n n squared. And if we match both of these we will get something interesting about the sum of 1 divided by n squared. Indeed, we now know that the sum from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the n n squared is equal to minus log of 2 all squared minus 1 half plus 1 half squared divided by 4 plus 1 half cubed divided by 9 plus 1 half to the fourth divided by 16 etc and the whole thing plus the sum from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by n squared. Actually you notice that this sum here is the same thing as the sum that we have here so we get that the sum from n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the n n squared is the same thing as minus log of 2 all squared minus the sum of n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the n n squared plus the sum of n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by n squared. So this gives us that this sum here is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by n squared is the same thing as log of 2 all squared plus 2 times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the n n squared and we can write this as the log of 2 all squared plus the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the n minus 1 n squared. Bingo! Now that we have our celebrated formula, let me remind you that we did some symbolic manipulations without justifying carefully why, for instance, the improper integral existed or why is termwise integration here justifiable. Euler did not pay much attention himself to these details. And note here that this new formula of summing the inverses of the perfect squares of positive integers is a rapidly converging series because of the terms 2 to the n minus 1 that we have here. And notice as well that Euler knew log of 2 to some decimal places, which made extracting the decimal expansion of this sum here an easy task, as we shall see on Python. To do so, I wrote a little computer program that I called here Basil2, which uses our celebrated formula to compute more decimals and more quickly of our sum of the inverses of perfect squares. Now, I would like also to compare it with Basil of n. So, first of all, I know that pi squared divided by 6, which is the theoretical value that I'm looking for, is equal to 1.64 something. And if I try this with Basil, the first function with 1000 iterations one gets that we have it equals to 1.6439 which is only correct to two decimal places now we would like to try basil 2 our second function with only 20 iterations and look what happens we have that it is equal to 1.6449306 which is see here it is almost actually pi squared divided by 6 and notice that by only doing 20 iterations instead of 1000 iterations we get more correct decimals of pi squared divided by 6. Now if you go further and try for instance Basel 2 of 100 you will see that we have here more decimals and quite the same thing. In generous what do you think? Part 2 of the Basel problem ends here. Thank you for listening and have a great day.